Hey, good morning, everybody. Here we are, Friday morning, about to wind the week up, and uh, we still got Brother Jared with us. Tonight's the last night of our meeting, so if you haven't made it yet, uh, we'd absolutely love to have you with us tonight. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but again, what a blessing it is that um, we've got this time uh, to be together and to be in God's Word to get our dose of it, uh, to get our day kicked off in the right direction. And this morning, we want to look at something way back in the Old Testament, back in the days of Israel. Um, back in Numbers chapter 21, we're going to find an outstanding example um, of his people in need. They've sinned, the consequences of that sin, and then God's solution uh, for them um, in the condition that they got themselves in. What we're going to be talking about is that this is the, this is the, the, the text that talks about the fiery serpents. Mm -hmm. Um, when uh, God got upset with them and sent all these fiery serpents and, and uh, they went around and started biting folks. Mm -hmm. It's uh, interesting, uh, the text here, Numbers 21, we'll begin in verse 5, it says, And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathed this light bread. Well, here they are. They're complaining again. Hey, what strong language mm -hmm. that they have used um, against God. They're speaking against God. Why have you brought us out here just to die? And what's interesting, God had just given them a great victory yeah. over King Aaron. Mm -hmm. A great They say, if you'll get, deliver him in our hand. Well, he did, and now here they are. Well, they did. They're complaining. We ain't got no bread. We ain't got no, and all you've given us to eat is this, is this dry, this mangy old mm -hmm. thing that's man every single day. They're just getting tired of it. There's one thing that I've learned, Jared, studying the Bible, and I think this is a consistent thread throughout the Bible, is God cannot stand being taken advantage of. No, I uh, uh, he, he, he's good to us he's, he, it, it rains on the just and on the unjust mm -hmm. and he cannot tolerate being taken advantage of it and that's what's going on in this and a lot of times with his people in the past but how did God respond to that? Verse 6 and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people and much people of Israel died therefore the people came to Moses and said we've sinned. Mm -hmm. You read this text and it sounds real familiar mm -hmm. to a text that we find mm -hmm. in our New Testaments in the book of Acts. It said, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. Mm -hmm. And Moses prayed for the people. So here, here people's got a problem. Mm -hmm. They rebelled against God. Well, God's holding them accountable. He sent these fiery serpents, and they'd bite folks, and they'd die. Yeah. They've, they've come to the conclusion, well, we've sinned. Well, they've made a good confession there, haven't they? Yeah, they did. And, and, and they've come to, <clears throat> to a belief here, we've done wrong, and they've confessed that they have done wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? And, but they still got the problem. Mm hmm they're, they're still getting bit. They're still getting there, bit. There's no remedy mm -hmm. yet, even though they have acknowledged and they understand the situation that they're they need a remedy, don't yes. they? Yes, yes. Yeah. And God gives them that remedy. And he goes on, and in verse 8, And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looks upon it, shall live. Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole, and it came to pass that if a certain serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Mm -hmm. Sounds a whole lot like faith, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure does. Sure does. Sounds, sounds a lot like faith. Sounds a lot like uh, these folks heard, believed, and obeyed. Because the ones who would look on the serpent uh, lived. You didn't look on that serpent. You're bit. You look on. The, did not look on the serpent. You're going to go ahead and die. But you were bit. Looked on that serpent. You could live. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's just interesting 
section of scripture here concerning this because here's an example of God's grace extended even after they've been complaining against him. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you're saying something about being taken advantage of, sure. And yet, still God's patience, God's forgiveness, God's grace, God's love is still evident here. A lot of times people treat the Old Testament and the things we read about God, they, I've heard people say, well, there's almost like there's two gods. There's a God of the Old Testament and a God of the New Testament, and the God just wants to kill, destroy, and all this, and then the God of the New Testament, why well, he's love and, and mercy and all that. And I said, if you, and I thought, if you think that, then you really haven't read the Bible. Because if you read the Bible and read the Old Testament, here's examples of love, faith, and mercy right here. Mm -hmm. Because he says, I'll make a way that you can be right. I found it interesting, uh, George, when you look at this. They prayed to God. And notice, uh, okay, so the, the serpents come and bite the people and they're killing people. Okay, now, they confess. We have sinned. We're wrong. Now, notice what their request is. Mm -hmm. Do you ever notice the request right here? They said, take away the serpents. Okay. Did you notice that never happened? No. It didn't happen. Snakes didn't go away. No. Now, there's been times in the past, and I, I, I wonder if they're, if, of course, I don't know their thought process, but I wonder if it doesn't harken back to the plagues. And whenever those plagues, you know, were done, and then they would pray and the plague would end, that event was over with. It wasn't like, it kept on going, it was taken away, whether it was, you know, whatever it might mm -hmm. be, whether it was the skin diseases of boils and other things, or frogs or flies or whatever, it was taken away. In this case, they're suffering, and you can call it a plague if you'd like, but they're suffering through these snakes and things. But at the end of the day, God didn't take them away. Their responsibility was going to be, you stay away from where the snakes are. That was going to be what they had to do. And I think about that even in reference to temptation today. We, we're tempted to sin and so forth, not by God, but by Satan. And James 1, 14 and 15 describes this. And we're tempted to sin. And we can pray as Christians. We're children of God. We can pray. We can have our sins forgiven. Then we can pray about our temptations now. Mm -hmm. But there's no, no sense in praying, please take all temptation away. <laughs> And that's not happening. Mm -hmm. But what we can pray for is in the midst of the temptation, pray for strength or pray, as 1 Corinthians 10 talks about, for that open door where we can see the way to escape and get mm -hmm. away that God has provided. It's kind of like this. There's a way to escape snake bite mm -hmm. if, you, if you'll do it. Now, uh, the, the one thing is, if you, if you don't want to get bit by a snake, number one, don't go where the snakes are. And then the second thing is, <laughs> yeah. if you do get bit by a snake, look at that brass serpent. Look that brass serpent up on that pole, and you can then be saved mm -hmm. from that. But, uh, the, again, the idea of God being hateful or being vengeful or just looking for ways to hurt and kill and maim, no. Uh, he punished them for wrongdoing and then provided a way to get it, to get yeah. it corrected. Yeah, yeah. It you know, a lot of people today uh, might, have, might have been standing back there. Well, well, Moses, what are you talking about? That, that's snake salvation. That's <laughs> serpent salvation. And mm -hmm. because a lot of people have mm -hmm. used that type of reasoning when it comes to baptism. No, they do. They well, do. well, well you're, you're telling me well, you know, we all believe in, in water salvation. No. Well, we all believe that, you know, that there's something in the water. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no. <It> just... <laughs> It's just old water that comes out of the pipes. There's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing special. To, but I, when I read through this, I see a direct parallel with those on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is here we have preaching. They realize they've sinned, mm -hmm. and then they want to know, what do we do about this? Do do Acts about two it? and verse thirty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they get the answer. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. What a great, it's the same teaching. Mm -hmm. it, it's a parallel, just different items that's, mm -hmm. that's involved. So here they sin. God provides a way. All right? If, if you don't want to die from this snake bite, yeah. here's what you do. Yes. 
Yeah. You just you, you look well. Well, what if I'm five miles away? Mm-hmm. Well, you feet don't fail me now. You're gonna. Yeah. The Bible says <laughs> you're gonna have to look at that. Yeah. You're gonna have to look at that mm-hmm. if you don't want to die. That's it. Uh, from that. Yeah. And so, it, it's a matter of faith. God, as we see God's grace in this, like we talked about yesterday, we mm-hmm. see God's grace. Mm-hmm. He provided a way. Yes. All right. Now, what are you going to do with it? Mm-hmm. All right. Now, mm-hmm. my faith is going to have to act mm-hmm. upon that. If I want to live, ad- admitting I'm a sinner, that's not going to get her done. And mm-hmm. that's a good point. The snakes didn't go away once yeah. they. Ad- admitted, and just mm-hmm. like those folks on the day of Pentecost, their sins didn't go away just because they come to realize that mm-hmm. they'd murdered mm-hmm. uh, the Messiah. Yeah, they still had to do something. They had to do something. They had to repent, and they had to be baptized. Mm-hmm. Yo, know, I don't. You know, these folks back here. I, I'm not afraid of snakes, mm-hmm. but I respect them. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't yeah. st- jump out of my skin when oh. I see one, but yeah. I, I, I respect them. Yeah. And, you know, if I got bit by a snake, one of the things that's going to be coming to my mind, I need to get some attention. Yeah. I need to get what's going to take care. I need I need some anti-venom yes. from this bite. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the same point when it comes to our sins. When I realize that I'm in my sins, I, I need to find out what do I need to do to remedy yes. this sin problem being yes. separated from God. Mm-hmm. All I can do is go back and say, well, what did God say? Yep. Repent and be baptized. And repent and be baptized. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's the thing. And so that's what these people would have to do. And that's a good point. Somebody says, well, I don't know if I'd trust in that. I think you're believing in serpent salvation. Or you're believing in the brass pole mm-hmm. salvation. So, what if I'm five miles away, or what if I'm ten miles away, or what if I'm climbing a mountain, or what if I'm doing... Well, you can say what if all day long, but at the end of the day, this is the way in which salvation comes, mm-hmm. you know. And we'll figure out a way. God's not going to uh, make these people be in such a situation that it's impossible to do His will. I think that's the thing we forget a lot of times. God's not going to make it where it's impossible to do His will. Somebody said, well, you just believe in... What, what if I'm uh, in, on a desert? I'm in the desert, and I just can't find... Well, you know, it's interesting. I've seen pictures of men in the desert being baptized. They were soldiers, mm-hmm. and they took a backhoe bucket and filled that backhoe bucket with water mm-hmm. and baptized people. Uh, I saw another time where they took and they dug a hole in the ground and put a tarp in that hole and filled that up with water and baptized people in a hole in the ground in the desert. I mean, you can. There are ways to get around this. It's mm-hmm. not impossible to to get there. And and again, people. Well, what if I'm on the moon? You know, what if I'm an astronaut on the moon? And everything yeah. else. I've I've I, I won't say I've heard everything, but I've heard a bunch of things. And all of these are is, is really an indictment against God to say he. I have a, I have figured out something that God didn't plan on. And therefore, he made an, a command it's impossible for me to do, you know, if I was on the moon, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. if I was wherever I might be. And, folks, that's the, that's the issue. That's just using more and more excuses instead of just accepting what he said. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you could go back to this brass serpent deal. You know, you could say, well, what if I'm on the mountaintop then? What if I'm over at Mediterranean Sea? Well, I don't know where all these snakes were, but I'm just saying... That you, we can make up stuff, you know. You, you have, well, add that. What if I'm on the moon and get bit by a snake on the moon? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could say it anything. How about we just accept what the Lord said? How about we just accept it, believe it, and obey it, and then see the blessings that come as a result? Mm-hmm. This, by the way, is parallel. Uh, it's a type and anti-type. I might not want to get into all that right now, but there's a this st- uh, event is in John chapter three. Right. Right. Jesus would say, as the as the Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, that's what he's talking about right here. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Mm-hmm. And what he's connected with is, of course, his crucifixion. But just like Moses lifted that up, and then Jesus is going to be lifted up, and then you add to John chapter twelve. If I and I understand it's another conversation. 
But John 12, he says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Mm -hmm. Ah, if the brass serpent is lifted up, what are the odds these people are going to say, well, let's just go to the mountaintop now, or let's go to the moon. They're not going to get very far from that brass serpent, mm -hmm. you know, for the very reason. They're not going to get very far because these snakes are around here. We're going to kind of keep it close yeah. just in case. Whenever I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We don't want to get far from Jesus. Yeah. We don't get, want to get far away from him. We want to be close to him so we can uh, follow him, believe on him. We can do as we'll be blessed by the Lord. Absolutely. And so that's that's what you find there. Well, anyways, you go yep. ahead. Yep, absolutely. And so, you know, there's there, there's your dose, you know, of God's word today. You know, and you know, with, with these snakes and these serpents, we find uh, we find the problem of sin. We find the problem of disobedience, which leads to sin. But then God's grace mm -hmm. provides a way. Now I just need to have faith to do what God said mm -hmm. in order to have it. So, mm -hmm. but we've got one more night of our gospel meeting with Jared. Um, tonight at 7 o'clock. What are we going to talk about tonight, Jerry? Lord willing, I want us to end with a parable that Jesus spoke. The parable of the ten virgins from Matthew chapter 25. And I'd like for us to look at that. I think there's a lot there for us to learn and consider. And even in comparison with our lives today. And just as well preparing for the last day. And preparing for judgment and so forth. And so while I recognize it's not really the end of Jesus' life, when you go back to Matthew 25, I think there's a lot there that, that can be uh, taken and used and applied for, certainly that was the Lord's preaching, and we'll take the Lord's sermon tonight and talk about it. Outstanding. Be looking forward to it. So, if you're free tonight at 7 o'clock, we'd love to have you, 2000 uh, West State Road 56, before you get to the speedway, top of the hill, uh, the caution line there at 56 and 60. So, Hope you can make it, and uh, Lord willing, we'll get back together and get us another dose of God's Word on Monday morning. Y'all have a great day.